take apart the memory into different uh, components, the descriptive memory and the non-descriptive non memory. The descriptive memory is something you can tell it out about your name, about, uh, about your year and uh, when were you born, uh, what kind of thing you learn from the class, and uh, to the non-descriptive one, it also can be divided into different. Uh, for example, how you just uh, uh, learn to ride a bicycle, you cannot just describe it out, but you can you can do this. How you drive a car, and also the motion emotional one, and or when when something or someone just get you angry, or get you uh, make you happy. This kind of memory is the non-descriptive one, mm. and also the descriptive one could uh, even more divided into different things. So, uh, different memory ha uh, may have a different uh, mechanism to encode them, to store them. The neural activity in the hippocampus, if, I, if you remember, hippocampus is related to the memory. And they uh, perform this kind of uh, experiment on the mice about the space memory. Yeah, space memories. You remember the, the things along the way you go home. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they find that uh, the more the neuron firing, the more the higher the neuron activity, the more the, the, the mice uh, remember this kind of place. Yeah. 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 Even though someone's opinion may contradict yours. Where's my friend Alan? It's all about your perspective. Who are we and what is the nature of this reality? Five, four, three, two, one. Ni hao everybody, welcome to Simulation. I'm your host Alan Sakyan. We are on site in the beautiful Beijing, China. We are at the Peking University School of Life Sciences. We are now going to be talking about encoding, storing, and the retrieval of memory. We have Bohan Lee joining us on the show. Hi, Bohan. Hi. Hi, Alan. Thank you so much for coming on our show. Yeah, uh, thank you too for interviewing me. I'm so excited for this conversation. Bohan, we went together to the Forbidden City too. We were yeah. talking so much. I'm very excited for this. You were teaching me a lot for those who don't know Bohan's background. He's an undergraduate student at Peking University's Health Science Center, studying neuroscience with an interest in learning and memory. And you can find his links in the bio below. Bohan, let's start things off by talking to you about who you were when you were young. You were born in the Gansu province. Yeah, Gansu province, a uh, west place uh, in China, west to west north, because mm -hmm. Beijing is more to the east of China. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, the city, uh, actually the Gansu province is really poor and uh, low in the econ economical. And uh, because the uh, uh, environment is bad there and the lack of water, because water is that everything to to the uh, creatures yeah yeah uh, but uh, and even the city when I was uh, where I was born is actually did not exist before the 1980s because mm. uh, why and why just people developed and established a city in just uh, 30 or 40 years mm -hmm. because uh, it's because one mantle from there uh, the nickel you know, the nickel uh, is used to make the coin. Yeah. The nickel, yeah, it's really, uh, it was really rare in China uh, before they find uh, the nickel, uh, such a, a mine in my in my city mm -hmm. named uh, Jinchang. Because if you translate the Jinchang into uh, English, it's more like, uh, it's related to the mantle. Mm -hmm. Jin means the gold, mm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, when they found that there was a nickel mine in my in my in my hometown, and they just uh, ask people, uh, especially those with uh, knowledge and uh, young people, would you like to to to, to help the Gansu province to develop the city to develop the northwest of China? And someone just go there, and uh, that's my grandparents uh, how they just get there. Interesting. So your grandparents went there as the city was developing because they found nickel and they made yeah. a nickel mine yeah. and they found that precious resource. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then how yeah. about 
you know, who you were, how did you pick up science, your interests okay, in these fields? Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was at my elementary school, that's right, mm -hmm. elementary school, I am uh, not a good student because I don't like to do homework. Uh, <laughs> even sometimes I just uh, throw it away and uh, go, back, go out to play. And also, um, uh, my father tried to push me to learn the mathematics and uh, I was just crying, <laughs> and my, 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 my mom was very angry. She said, Creamy and my father, don't you, don't you dare to try to push, push him to learn the math, uh, mathematics, uh, because every time he tried to push me to learn the mathematics, I just, and I'm, uh, I'm not very happy, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, sometimes I cried. Uh, so, but, well, things are different when I just enter my uh, middle school. Uh, everything seems to work out. Seems to work out because uh, I just get a good grade, good grades in my middle school. And um, when when I just uh, uh, first uh, to first to uh, learn about the chemistry, I was very mm. interested in that mm. from my middle school. Yeah, about. Uh, the second year of my middle school mm -hmm. and chemistry just I don't know why but I can um, uh, easily remember those compound structures remember those reactions yeah yeah and also the biology is the one thing I'm also interested in uh, at that time but uh, the chemistry is the most one most the first one mm -hmm. and uh, it's, a, it's the same thing at my high school both uh, by chemistry and uh, the biology is the most uh, what I'm what the subject I loved uh, and uh, actually my father is a physics mm. teacher so <laughs> but actually I hate physics <laughs> and I'm really really bad at, at physics yeah interesting so the moments of, of youth, this is actually really important for many different people, both watching as well as guests we've had on the show. There's these like pivotal moments when we're young where we have maybe a family member that's trying to influence us to do something. It yeah. can be both very good, but sometimes it can also be not the right path yeah. for the young person. And so it's good that you ended up picking up this interest yeah. in chemistry, biology, yeah. fascination with it. So then what about when you were going from high school to picking university oh. how did that process happen just like most of the most of the college students just to enter the adult examination the national adult examination the gaokao yeah gaokao yeah and uh, if you get good get get a grade and you could go to the uh, the mm -hmm, the university and the Peking University or the Tsinghua University is the most go, the most uh, best uh, university in China, the top two university. And uh, I really want to uh, enter the Peking University because uh, Peking University has more uh, is more good at the science, mathematics, uh, chemistry, physics, or biology. But actually, my grade is not that high enough to enter the, you know, the biological or the life science center or mm -hmm. the life science department. So I just have another option to enter the health science center or the medical school at mm -hmm. Peking University. And it's uh, it needs a little bit lower grade than when enter here. Mm -hmm. So I just enter there and. Uh, Somehow I just find Yulong and uh, enter his lab, his, uh, his, uh, yeah, just the same. So, uh, so then, okay, so while you're an un undergraduate student, you're figuring out that, okay, I really like neuroscience, yeah, I want yeah, to pursue yeah. the brain. You find Yulong in the lab and their yeah. work in neuroscience, and now you're here yeah. all the time. I, mean, I, uh, I, all the time. I see you all here all the time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, actually, I entered my college, and uh, I first uh, at the first year of my college, I entered a lab studying the cancer, study 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 the epigenetics, mm -hmm. 
it's also very uh, it's also very good lab. Uh, but I also learned a little about the psychology when I, as my first year, the half first year, uh, and uh, it's the first time I get connect. I know about the psychology and really, uh, you know, inspired me and how or we can just uh, uh, think about things in this way, and uh, I just uh, decided to. Major another major another degree uh, on the psychology one, and uh, but when I go deeper on the psychology, when I take um, more and more psychological classes, I started to question. Uh, psychology sometimes cannot answer why uh, they can, they can uh, or we can describe it more a little bit uh, superficial. Because psychology psychology one they don't. Uh, go down to the neuro, neuro, neurons. They do not go down to the cells. They do not go down the proteins. Mm. So I just transfer my interest uh, from from elsewhere to the neuroscience. Yes. Yeah, that's yes. how I just uh, get into the neuroscience. And then why were you so interested with the neurons and the neurotransmission, the neural communication, how our brain works? Why did you find this to be so interesting? Uh, why did I find so interesting? Uh, that's a good question. A very interesting. Well, I'm, mm -hmm. I need to say that the first time I get uh, interested in the neuroscience or the psychology is because uh, of the depression. Uh, it's not me, but someone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, it is really, uh, it is very bad uh, experience to me. So I just. Uh, so I just decided to try to how to uh, decided to try how to uh, overcome the depression, the major depressive disorder, yes. MDD. Yeah, and uh, actually, I uh, before I enter Yulong's lab, I'm really in, uh, I have already learned about about the depression and uh, yeah. But when I was trying to go down deeper and uh, I just can find uh, sometimes you, you go to you, you go to in the depression status because uh, some kind of a memory yeah some kind of a memory will affect you to, to, to become a depressive one and so I just uh, transfer my you know interest from the depression to the learning and memory yeah especially the memory yeah when we see a, a friend or a family member or someone that's even in our, just in our vicinity and we just see that they're a little bit more depressed or maybe they have major depressive disorder that mm -hmm. it triggers us to want to know, you know, what's happening in their brain, what's mm -hmm, happening mm -hmm. in their life. Yeah. And also how can we help them heal? How yeah. can we help them be healthier? Yeah. Um, okay, so then now this has a lot to do with what has happened in their past that has made them feel this way yeah. and then what is the exact neural structures in their brain uh, and the neural yeah. communication in their yeah. brain that's causing yeah. them some to feel that way. Some abnormal neural communications or neuro, some abnormal in the neural network mm -hmm. of their brain. Yeah. And so then you decided that you wanted to tackle this big challenge of understanding the encoding, the storage, the retrieval, overall of learning and memory. This mm -hmm. is very interesting mm -hmm. because we look around at our world and we, mm -hmm. we see a chair and mm -hmm. we wonder, when did I learn this word chair? Yeah. And yeah. how am I storing this word yeah, chair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how do I recall, how this, recall word? this word? Because these chairs are different than if this chair was made of mm, wood. Yeah. And, but it, even though it's a different chair, it still uses the same word, chair. Yeah, they have a, uh, the, the same schema yeah. in our brain, mm -hmm. uh, the chair schema, and uh, really to the different wood chairs, iron chairs, high chairs, tall, uh, mm -hmm. uh, low chairs, uh, yeah, yes, yes. different kind of chairs. Yeah, it's really, uh, re also uh, other words or other things have a schema in our brain, but how we uh, store the schema, how, how we just encode it into our brain, and how just we retrieve it back, record it back, 
it's really uh, not very clear at nowadays. Yes. So let's start going through some of the examples. You and I were you were teaching me about these. Yes, two 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 days. Yeah. Two days ago. Two, two, two days ago, you were teaching me about these. You said, "Well, how do you how do you think that?" we remember as a kid something as important as 911 or the emergency phone number mm -hmm. or like even your mom or your dad's name mm -hmm. you just remember these things because they're mm -hmm. very important things mm -hmm. how do we store something that has that much importance you know maybe we ascribe mm -hmm. the weight mm -hmm. of the variable mm -hmm. as level 90 very important out of mm -hmm. 1 to 100 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but maybe when I learn someone's name mm -hmm. that I might not meet again, maybe yeah. they're like the server at the restaurant yeah. or something, I maybe only ascribe level five yep. to that. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. way it doesn't get encoded and stored mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as high yeah. priority. Yeah, yeah. So teach us about what you're thinking about this process. Okay, and uh, actually uh, I cannot uh, just uh, teach, I uh, can tell something I know. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, people just uh, try to uh, uh, take apart the memory into different uh, components the descriptive memory and the non-descriptive non memory the descriptive memory is something you can tell it out about your name about, uh, about your year and uh, when were you born uh, what kind of thing you learn from the class and uh, to the non-descriptive one it also can be divided into different uh, for example, how you just uh, uh, learn to ride a bicycle, you cannot just describe it out, but you can, you can do this, how you drive a car, and also the motion, emotional one, and or when, when something or someone just gets you angry, or get you, uh, make you happy, this kind of memory is the non-descriptive one, mm. and also the descriptive one could uh, even more divide it into different things, so uh, different memory ha uh, may have a different uh, mechanism to encode them, to store them. Um, mm, uh, we just talk about, okay, I will a little bit talk about the emotional one, not descriptive, because I learned something from the, uh, I learned something about the depression. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. The depression is uh, some kind of you. If you in the definition of uh, uh, DSM five, uh, they will call this um, emotional disorder uh, uh, because they are just uh, if you if you rank someone's activity or energy energy from zero to one hundred, most people are in the range uh, around fifty, but someone uh, just go down uh, to the ten to the five grade and they will never uh, it's hard for them to get them back mm. uh, that's a depressive uh, you know depressive state and uh, uh, it definitely the people's personality or uh, how just the uh, how just the environment uh, uh, affects them uh, has a has a has a big uh, influence on the depression status, but also, uh, also the things the experienced has a, uh, also has a lot of influence on this. If someone is uh, if is susceptible to depression, if the personality is not uh, uh, strong enough, and also he experienced something really bad, when this combined together, he he or she would. Uh, uh, maybe get in, get in trouble, get into the depression. Yeah. Yeah, it's just from a very uh, big picture to see. And if, uh, and the people, yeah, if I, I, I saw the interview you, 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 you did for Elon and he talked about uh, some FDA approved drugs like uh, serotonin, SSRI, SNRI, any kind of drugs, they are trying to target the monoamine pathway in our brain. Because some people uh, in the in the last century believed it is a uh, it is a dysregulation of monoamine in our brain uh, finally cause our, cause us to be a depressive one. Um, 
Yeah, and、uh, also, it indicates maybe the theory is not right, but it indicates something or some networks. Uh, not all of the ad networks, but someone related to the monoamy network,、uh, may go wrong. May go wrong in our brain, and uh, we uh, just uh, uh, you know <coughs>、uh, behave the like.、Uh, I I I just want to die. I want to suicide. I I feel、mm. I feel nothing about happy. I I yeah, just this kind of thing. And、uh, also, if you if you know about the ketamine. Mm-hmm. It's some kind of drug.、Uh, if you abuse it, but also ketamine, people find now ketamine can treat depression. Yeah.、Uh, FDA just approved the ketamine as a therapeutic, uh, therapeutic one、uh, this year, just this year. Yeah. And before the ketamine was approved,、uh, around thirty, th- yeah, thirty years, there are no drugs approved、uh, to treat. The depression. Yeah. Yeah.、Uh, ketamine is yeah. really, uh,、um, you know, pot- potent or potential compound. Yeah. And someone is just working on it, try to make it more safe, more more safer,、uh, with no side effects on the psychopath,、uh, on the psychopaths or some other side effects. Yeah. And. We've we've interviewed people that have been、uh, psychedelic psychotherapists,、mm-hmm. and they are currently using ketamine, ketamine、yeah. for healing people with depression, PTSD, all different types of. of、yeah. It just it's so good to see、uh, more and more discoveries like that for people to be able to heal,、mm-hmm. and it comes with an assisted. Psychotherapist,、yes. so someone that can help me before, during, and after,、um, with the integration and the healing. You mentioned, I found this really interesting. So, it's is it evident that our brain will encode and store memory that is descriptive versus non-descriptive? So, if I I store、uh, Bohan Li.、Mm-hmm. Differently, it it's a descriptive one. I well, store、yeah. it differently. Differently, I am. Then I store something like how I felt when we were in the Forbidden City. Yeah. Because my feeling when I was there is non-descriptive. Yeah, yeah. there will be a connection because there will be a connection be- between my name and、uh, the feeling you feel、uh, in the Forbidden City. Because involve involve the involution,、uh, trying to push us into some、uh, emotional animal. Because you don't have to remember everything, but you have to remember something important, especially、uh, related to the danger or related to the happiness. So if you add some、uh, emotional element、uh, into your、uh, your the memory process,、mm. you may、um, memory it better. Yeah. Than normal things. It, 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 when you, if for example, you are just trying to、uh, recite. For me, I'm trying just trying to recite words.、Uh, blah 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 blah. It's really boring with no emotion. Yeah. Even even the negative emotion in this. But,、uh, you know, if I.、Uh, like for me, it's.、Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. A wo sai feng bei da jiao shi. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. You can, a, you can remember even even forever. Because it's a very important one for me. It took a while, maybe me repeating it thirty times,、mm-hmm. but for me, it's an important one that I interview Peking University professors because I think、uh, it's one of those phrases that can explain to someone why I'm in China. Yeah, yeah, and very quickly, and also. If, like you were saying, if we associate when we were in the Forbidden City,、mm-hmm. if I associate the experience maybe with the the the、um, the, the museum of clocks,、mm-hmm. and I associate it with us five that were there, and and then I associate it with maybe the smell, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, of or the t- <laughs> yeah the smell, yeah the smell of the bean bean soup. Do you remember? The, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, or the roast duck, right? Or the, yeah, yeah, that we yeah, had yeah. afterward, the、um, yeah. Beijing Kao Ya.、Mm-hmm. Um, and so maybe、um, the more, because this is the 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 memory champions. We've had memory champions on our show before, and they say that if we add senses like smell, touch,、mm, yeah, taste, yeah, 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 and then you know, we can encode and store more effectively. Yeah. Yeah, it's、uh, very similar to 
Yeah, uh, even the same the same thing, because if you add something more uh, emotional element or some more clues, memory clues, to encode one thing, you can remember it remember it uh, um, more more better. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Okay, so then let's do um, let's keep going on the example because I think this one's um, this one's pretty interesting too. What's the difference? Because this is probably one of the most studied uh, creatures, mm -hmm. the Drosophila, the fruit fly. Yeah. Okay, so the amount of neurons mm -hmm. in Drosophila is much much lower. Mm -hmm. um, the amount of what we think is like conscious experience in the Drosophila is much much lower. What mm -hmm. we think, and so what would be our idea of some of the differences with how we encode, store, and retrieve memory versus how the fruit fly does. Uh, okay, the difference uh, between how the mammalian cell, a uh, mammalian animals like human or mice, and uh, in church, uh, store or encode the memory difference from uh, the Drosophila. I would say the Drosophila is very. Uh, uh, on the, evo uh, on the evolution of trees, very, uh, very low at, uh, rank ranking, mm -hmm. and uh, for the m mammalian, for the human, for the mice, it's already get much higher on the evolution of tree. So, for for the survival of this kind of insect, like Drosophila or um, uh, some other insect, they may not have the conscious use you you, you just uh, mentioned. They, they may not have the, some kind of a conscious uh, experience. They may not can uh, process something in their brain, and they just need to, uh, you know, if uh, if they just uh, smell uh, some kind of odor, and uh, when someone just a shock, electric shock to him, and he will just uh, uh, this kind, this one, this neuron, this neuron, they fire together and they wire together, and uh, they know, oh, okay, this odor is an uh, indication of danger. So they just uh, to, uh, attach them together. together. Okay. <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, then people, some people will say this kind of, this is a, a repetitive memory, but uh, I, would, I would more, uh, I would more like to say it's some kind of a reflex, because memory uh, in our brain, uh, uh, we uh, just to try. We can we can retrieve the memory and uh, we can process on the memory, uh, just like we are watching a movie. But for the Drosophila, I'm not so sure whether they could do the same thing, uh, like us. We yeah, and uh, the uh, this is a part of the difference uh, between the memory mechanism between uh, Drosophila and a uh, human being, and also for, from the structure level. Uh, the Drosophila brain is very sm uh, really small, has uh, much much uh, lower number of uh, neurons. But and for the human brain or the mice brain, they have already developed or involved uh, some kind of a, a s brain structure, uh, especially especially designed to uh, to to remember things. Uh, for example, the hippocampus. People believed the hippocampus is related to the long-term memory, and for the amygdala, people believed amygdala is associated with or related to the emotional memory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but for Drosophila, their brain structure is different from us. Yeah, that's that's also might be uh, the difference between how human uh, between the human and uh, the Drosophila's memory, but. Someone, someone told me, but also well, Yulong told me, told us that uh, the cells function may be different from one species to another species. Just like we have this kind of a, uh, this kind of a, a brain architecture, and uh, the Drosophila don't have this one. Mm. But the molecular, the protein, mm. their function might be really conservative, mm. but really be conserved through the evolution, through mm. the evolution. So. We can also uh, learn about how just the Drosophila form a memory, 
the uh, I told you the order of the appetitive memory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we can learn its molecular mechanism, and we can find whether there is a same molecular, same molecule, same sorry molecule, same molecule or same protein, uh, or the homolog of this. Uh, in the human brain and we can just uh, visit, uh, try to visit how this kind of protein or molecule works in a human brain or in the mice brain mm -hmm. and this might just uh, might, uh, provide some indicates uh, how we just uh, yeah. it um, provides some clues yes so, so then it's although it may be that the this brain structure itself Dif is different. different. The molecular yeah. and protein dynamics yeah, may, may be closer to yeah, similar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's closer or similar. As people has, has already uh, published a lot of works doing on the Drosophila or the Theatigant trying to identify how this kind of protein or how this kind of molecule works and uh, because uh, a sialigant or the drosophila is a very robust genetic machine a gen sorry genetic tool to study uh, because they grow fast they product a lot but for the for the mice you know they just give uh, about five to ten babies at a time and the baby needs needs more needs, needs about is about uh, three months to grow into an uh, adult one. So it, if you just uh, do the su such kind of screening on the mice, it will take you. It will take you a lot of time, and it, yeah. And also the mice brain or is very complex than the sialigant neurons. Yeah. So you, you can just uh, do this kind of screening on the sialigant, trying to identify the molecular mechanism and put it back into the mice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Is it fair to say that when we take a piece of a banana mm -hmm. and put it next to a fruit fly mm -hmm. versus we take a piece of a banana and put it next to the hungry human mm -hmm. that there's some similar molecular and protein uh, might, might be some sim a similar mo uh, molecular mechanism especially because it's food it's source of food which is to sustain the body so it's like uh, something's being triggered within us that says, if you eat, you live longer. And that could be the same thing with uh, even all of the other evolutionary creatures. If eat, live longer. So that could be some sort of very ancient biological feature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even doesn't even need the nervous system to even mm -hmm. the bacteria. Yeah. Yeah. How about when we talk about LTP, okay. long-term potentiation? Teach us about what this is. Okay. And LTP is some kind of uh, some kind of uh, neuronal communication between two neurons, even between uh, three neurons. Uh, uh, actually, it's uh, first was discovered on the hippocampus slices, cultured slices, because in the 1950s, one patient called the patient HM, he got a damage on his hippocampus. Uh, if I uh, remember it right, something just uh, uh, stuck into his brain and uh, make his uh, hippocampus damage, or or, or if. Or it's another uh, story version that he has a um, epilepsy or seizure in his hippocampus region, so the doctors just uh, remove the hippocampus from him and to to treat the epilepsy or seizure. And from from he he was uh, from his hippocampus was destroyed. Uh, he just cannot form long term memory. Just like if you meet him uh, at now. You say, uh, hi, HM, I, I'm Alan, 
and uh, after you just uh, he will sh he will shake hands with you. He will introduce who he is, and uh, and if you just uh, walk away and uh, back in five minutes later, he you do the same thing. He will hi, I'm HM. He will do the same thing. He cannot form this kind of a long term memory, yeah. but he could also remember uh, who, who he is and uh, 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 what did he do when he was a child, when he was young, and uh, something in the past. Mm. So people just uh, learn about that uh, hippocampus is associated or related to the form, form of the to the form of uh, long term memory. So. So yeah, and uh, also memory sometimes uh, lives uh, uh, lives uh, through our entire life. People believe their memory is something can last long, and yeah. So the, when people first say uh, do the hippocampus slices and uh, record the LTP uh, from from the neurons, they they they, they believe that well, this is a uh, formation of memory, yeah. And uh, how just the LTP is induced? Uh, if you remember, uh, you can put an electrode at the C3 region. It has an the three C3 region neurons has a connection with C1 region neurons. And uh, if you do not do anything, just uh, put a record electrode at the C1 neuron. And you stimulate C3 neuron one pulse, and you can just uh, inc record a, a normal signal because they have they have connections. So if you uh, trigger the upstream and downstream, will have a reflex, will will have a response actually. But if you <coughs> stimulate the C3 the upstream with with 300 hertz frequency of electric shock or something. And you can which is abnormal for the brain. Yeah, which is uh, do not exist in the brain, yes. but people can do this other sizes. Yes, and you can re record a, a a larger signal, which uh, really which compared to the uh, normal one, it's mm -hmm. larger, and even it can last for three weeks on the culture neuron if the culture the uh, size is alive culture. Yes. it's kind of. Uh, uh, signal increase, so people just uh, uh, named this kind of long-term potentiation. Also, there is a long-term depression. If you wow, long-term depression uh, is the same thing, but opposite on the you goes down or goes you goes up or goes down. Long-term depression, this kind of long-term potentiation. Yeah. yeah, at that time people do a lot of this kind of uh, uh, LTP on the aplasia. Uh, it's some kind mm -hmm. of a sea snail, yeah. Sea snails with no, uh, with no uh, rocks on their yeah, back. Yeah, without the shell. Yeah, without the sh without yeah. the shell. Yeah. yeah, and uh, yeah. So then, it's possible that our memory has a lot to do with how much stimulation we our nervous system associates with that initial stimuli. So if we give it lots of stimulation or lots of importance to encode, there could be the mechanism of long-term potentiation that gets activated so that there's a greater amount of storage and a greater amount of then ability to retrieve or recall that versus if it's, if it's supposed to be a high level memory that we're supposed to remember. Maybe I do something that takes me a lot of time that mm -hmm. I'm supposed to get a good reward for, but when I get the reward, instead of having the response with long-term potentiation that's higher, I don't have that. That could be associated with depression. Mm -hmm. It's really not uh, associated with a reward or not. It's it's a time dependent thing. Hmm. Teach yeah. us more, yeah. What does that mean? Okay, LTP um time dependent thing, yeah. Mm. I'm wondering if it has to do with how fast we get the 
response. How fast is the response? Wait, wait, within, within milliseconds. And if very, very fast. Really fast. And if it's delayed or not present, then the problem with some sort of mental issue can happen. Uh, that might be, but uh, actually I. I'm not so sure whether there's evidence indicates this. Yeah. You have the LTP, and uh, if you remember, you, you, you stimulate the presynaptic neuron at uh, about 300 hertz. And also, uh, mm -hmm. you stimulate the, mm, the postsynaptic one as a time dependent m manner. Okay. You know, you firstly, uh, so firstly uh, stimulate this and uh, then this one will stimulate. There will form a, uh, some kind of uh, a connection and long-term potentiation. But if you first stimulate the post-synaptic one, and then uh, stimulate the presynaptic one mm -hmm. in a, in an opposite time manner, yes. there will be a LTP. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, I forgot to introduce that. Uh, the formation, uh, the requir requirement to form an uh, LTP also needs two neurons to work together. Sorry, I, I, I forgot to uh, introduce it. Uh, there is a proverb in the neuroscience, uh, work together, work together, wire together. Yeah. Yeah. So stimulate this and then stimulate this one. There will have an LTP formation, but if you first stimulate the post one and uh, then uh, stimulate the presynaptic one. There is kind of some kind of a uh, R, R match and there will, uh, the signal will just go down and form a LTD depression. Uh, mm -hmm. This kind of depression means if you stimulate, if you stimul stimulate the presynaptic one and it will release less uh, neurotransmitters and you will recount uh, less, uh, a lower signal, and also the pen potential long-term potentiation one is, uh, it if you just re stimulate the presynaptic neuron at a just a normal normal uh, you know normal strength, and it will release more uh, such kind of a transmitter tr neurotransmitters like a glutamate uh, than it should be and. Uh, so if the more uh, neurotransmitters that could meet and it will trigger a larger signal on the postal one. So it's, it's a, it is a time dependent one, mm -hmm. time and time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, so people just try to uh, know also this kind of a rule that time dependent uh, people believe uh, we first, uh, first learn something and also uh, something to us in a time dependent, uh, this kind of manner, uh, this kind of a long t LTP uh, just uh, developed and uh, we remember this. But actually, there is a lot of evidence uh, arguing about uh, LTP is now the final formation of, uh, of memory. Yes, yes, because LTP has some many, many properties like it is sometimes it's uh, not that robust and it might disappear, but uh, the, the memory is still there. And also uh, it mm. is mm -hmm. hard to uh, simulate uh, this kind of uh, uh, LTP uh, in a neural network if you do this. And uh, to, 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 uh, to support it is the formation of memory. I think, uh, So there are also a lot of hypotheses or theories, like uh, Ingram, Ingram cell, also any, any other uh, hypothesis. The Ingram is uh, the Ingram E N G R A M means uh, the material, the physical or the chemical material bearing the memory. Mm. It's, it is word created in the 1920s, mm -hmm. uh, about 100. Uh, 100 ago, 100 a year ago. Mm -hmm. So people now find that they actually have some kind of a thing uh, like the Ingram and uh, they use this word. 
As in the actual memory of a chair might be literally located inside of neurons? Inside of neurons or inside the neuron communications, people don't know. Inside of a neural network of maybe like a thousand of them. Yeah, or, yeah. And that might have to take the activation of that neural network in order to remember chair. Yeah. And then would it maybe then be something along the lines of my association to objects or things or people or whatever it may be, events, emotions, feelings that are maybe more vivid they have a greater weight, a greater importance for me to remember, might activate potentially more yeah. neurons. Actually, there is a science paper published recently indicates it is, uh, might be the, 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 the thing you told. It might be the same thing you told. <coughs> they record the neural activity in the hippocampus. If, I, if you remember, hippocampus is related to the memory and they uh, perform this kind of uh, experiment on the mice about the space memory. Yeah, space memories. You remember the, the things along the way you go home. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, they find that uh, the more the neuron firing, the more the higher the neuron activity, the more the, the, the mice uh, remember this kind of place. Yeah. 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 But it needs a uh, year. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. We can maybe then do things like create a memory palace with um. the with the different <laughs> yeah different places encode yeah. uh, encode this kind of associ association between exactly. Mm -hmm. And that has helped me a lot. The TEDx talk I gave in San Francisco, I created a memory palace with really big, vivid things that helped me walk through my points that I needed to recite in the talk. So it's quite possible that, depending on how much weight we ascribe to the thing that we're sti in inputting as stimuli and how many emotions, associations, senses that we put to that stimuli that we can potentially be more in control of how it's encoded and stored in our brain and then be able to recall it better. Maybe we can activate more mm -hmm neurons mm -hmm. and a little mm -hmm. bit more neural networks activated for the recall uh, mm -hmm. to be prioritized more. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bohan, what would you want to see happen with our understanding of encoding storage and retrieval of memory, learning and memory? Where could this go where it could help us with our health, with eradicating disease? Yeah. Uh, the, there are some kind of uh, uh, psychiatry like uh, PTSD, uh, anxiety, depression, and even the bipolar disorder have some kind of this kind of uh, emotional or the descriptive component in, uh, involved in this kind of uh, diseases. So especially the PTSD, if we can eliminate the bad memory, we can just easily treat, treat the PTSD and uh, for the also their Alzheimer's disease the first uh, thing that people are suffering is they are starting to losing their memory yeah. so if we can just uh, finally if one day uh, if one day we can finally decoding the whole memory system we can record their memory into some yeah, into the computer, or and then finally, uh, just like in the movie, we, we, we take a chip in our brain and uh, we just storage memory in that, and uh, we don't have to worry about forgetting 
yeah, any, yeah. anything else. But it's long. It might must take a long, long, long yeah. effort to achieve that one. But actually, the recent, uh, the purpose or the recent, uh, the how the memory uh, research can help us is to um, actually uh, just to try to decode this whole system and uh, figure out what can how it works. And finally, we can just talk about the, how the application. So if you don't, if we don't know how they works, how how could we just apply this to treat disease? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so we understand better how. Uh, learning and memory works, then we can better tackle things like PTSD, anxiety, depression. We can maybe go to the exact source of the neural network, which yeah. right now is happening a little bit with electrical, magnetic, and ultrasound mm -hmm. stimulation. Yeah. And so that can be used for healing. Yeah. And then we also have this long-term potential where we can do things like take the way that we encode memory and can we create a similar an analog on a computer chip of yeah. what we're perceiving and recall at any time yeah, these ideas yeah, of the yeah. neural prosthetics yeah. is very interesting yeah. and maybe we can get there it's important for us to be morally and ethically evolved uh, as we yeah. get there yeah that's a t-shirt i think it's really uh, it's a matter yes yes mm. What would you say is uh, an ideal neuroscience tool? Maybe like 50 or 100 years down the line, what would be your ideal version of a tool that enables us to solve the brain? <laughs> the most ideal, ideal, ideal tool is to be the God. And you say, what happens in the cell? What happens in three cells? What happens in the uh, neural networks to be the God? But actually, it is uh, not possible for us to be the God and so we just uh, try to first from different uh, different levels from the protein levels to the neuron levels to the network levels there are different levels of, uh, indeed needs different type of uh, tools and uh, <coughs> for, for the for the yeah for the actually for the cell cell levels yeah, uh, if we, you don't have already, I think you don't have already told you we have opogenetic tools. Yeah. We have yeah chemical genetic tools to uh, activate or inhibit the neurons in a very efficient and uh, uh, controllable way. Yes, and also we have our observation tools like our grab sensors or the GABA sniffer uh, developed by other groups. Uh, we can record how neuron, how these neurons uh, work in the physiology condition. And, uh, but all these kind of, you know, mm. this kind of tools, whatever the uh, perturbating one or observation one, they need to uh, dig, up, dig into, the, the, into the brain and uh, bring a little damage uh, to the brain and cannot apply it on the human uh, for, you know, ther for therapeutic uh, purpose. And uh, the, for the most ideal tool, I think it is less invasiveness and uh, yeah. the most controllable is also the one, uh, also uh, the thing we need to concern about. Yeah, and uh, the time and the spatial resolution is also, yeah, things. Yeah. So if we can just uh, monitor or a p a perturbating, uh, perturbate a neuron, one single neuron in our brain without just uh, to dig a hole on the, on the brain. And uh, this yes. is finally the ideal uh, tool. Yes, but yes. yeah, it may take the effort yeah. to develop this. Someone just have already developed the magnet tech, magnet, uh, the, mm. the magnet tech. Uh, kind of tool to control the drug release in our brain. Wow. So they don't need to, uh, you know, dig into the dig, dig into the brain and uh, give light to stimulate to stimulate the neurons. Mm -hmm. They just to uh, put the brain M in magnet. the magnet uh, file. Yes. Yeah, and control the drug release. Yes. Someone yes. has already uh, developed this kind of tool, but uh, far from to apply it more efficiently or in the human, yeah. the human. Yeah, mm. I like that, that the, the ideal tool will be ones that give us godlike powers over the brain. What about 
inspiring more people around the world to work together. How can we best do that? Uh, how do we just inspire people? Yeah. Mm, actually, um, I haven't considered this question before this time. Um, let me think. Inspire. How do you inspire people? Because the science, sometimes the science is really uh, hard to push, if, uh, especially when you are standing on the cutting edge of the science. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the members of China, China uh, Science Academy, one of the members told me it's really uh, painful uh, or it's painstaking in pushing the, new, pushing the science. And uh, the first time I met him, he just told me this. Only one sentence. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, and uh, for the science one, I, I think it's it's uh, if someone is really interested in uh, how to to do the research to push the science age, uh, those uh, you know those his his fellow workers, his uh, peers. Uh, they can communicate with each with, e with each other on uh, some kind of a meeting or conference around the world, and uh, they just uh, try to communicate their their thoughts. They communicate uh, how they uh, how they uh, study the brain, what kind of mechanism or what kind of uh, uh, what kind of you know the hypothesis mm -hmm. they hold, and uh, this kind of uh, uh, sometimes cause a conflict or. Uh, yeah, just kind of thing, and uh, will will just inspire those two, and they will oh wow we can we can uh, we can thought about things in this way, and uh, that guy is also uh, we can uh, we can learn things uh, mm -hmm. through this kind of tool, like yeah. So mm -hmm. as for other other peoples around the world, uh, someone uh, for because uh, for example workers. Or the other, I'm not actually um, don't know how to inspire them. But for the neuroscience or science researchers, I think communicate is a good way. And uh, yeah, if or especially when they find something, they can work together. Someone just if there is a black box, someone just decode the, the left part of the black box, and someone just decode the right part. If they combine together, yes. they could finally decode this. Yes. Black box. Yes, yes. What would be a skill that young people should know as we go into the technology age? One skill, actually, uh, I am not good at the computation, uh, how to, to write a program, and uh, how to do, yeah, how to write the codes. And actually, I think also the math, the mathematics is a fundamental or the basic to learn or 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 in uh, yeah uh, to learn the computation so i would suggest to try to um make your uh, mathematics and or the physical knowledge solid and uh, try to learn about how to you know encode uh, how to write the computation compu computational um, computational codes how to write a program and uh, especially, uh, uh, especially uh, when you are trying to um, enter the biological area because uh, this kind of uh, um, X, X tag you said uh, this kind mm. of uh, this kind of guy is really uh, people who are desiring for because they both know the biological thing, also know the computational thing, yes. and they can combine them together. Because, you know, the, when we're trying to go down deeper on the biological area, the information just uh, go, just go explode, and uh, more and more information uh, just engage in. And uh, for us, for, for us, uh, the biological researchers, we don't know how to handle this kind of uh, information. But if you know about the computation, uh, science, and uh, you can oh I can uh, es establish or write some kind of program to find or to you know uh, to 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 use this kind of information mm. to try to find something in that. Yes. There must be a lot of uh, you know gold 
yes. in this kind of information. But if you yes. don't know con computer, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Interesting. So yeah, our ability to see the world as information that we can mine and understand, but we need to know math, computational science yeah, yeah, yeah. to be able to mine that. And then how about this big human experiment that we're all a part of? What do you think is the meaning of the human experiment? I mean, a human. Yeah, I can tell what others, uh, what other would say the meaning of their life. That for, for me, it's to actually I'm really interested in the science, and I actually want to. Uh, and also, I'm trying to push, uh, push the, push the uh, science age a little bit further, uh, maybe t t ten feet long. But uh, that's enough. And uh, for me, it's to trying to find something really can help, uh, help the society or even just help the researchers. It's okay. We can find something new, and we uh, stand on this. Uh, new knowledge and trying to go down deeper. Yeah, that's the meaning of my life. I think I just want to yeah. the simple thing. I just want to try to dig out the science. Yeah. And how about? Do you think we have free will, or do you think there's determinism? What do you think? Yeah. Uh, at the first class class of my general psychology. Uh, P, the teacher taught taught me that the psychology is uh, some kind of subject uh, learning the determinati determination. Yeah, because uh, they just uh, have assumption that um, one some kind of a you know behavior or something will lead to some kind of a specific consequence. So uh, also his behavior is affected by. Uh, the upper behavior, the upper, uh, just like a chain conduction, this kind of effect. Yeah, uh, someone's behavior affect another, and another do another be behavior to another one. And yeah, but for me, I would like to mm -hmm, hold the free will thing. Yeah, for me, yeah, I would hold the free will thing because uh, determination is kind of you know stubborn and. Uh, it's just like our fate or destiny is already be written, um, mm -hmm. and sometimes if someone just uh, hold that kind of belief, uh, uh, especially when they are in trouble or in a poor condition, they will say, "Oh, my life is just like this. Uh, I will not try to struggle because the God has already judged me." Uh, Versus breaking out of it and achieving more in life. Uh, yeah, yeah. I would hold the free will and uh, free will thing. I would uh, trying to yeah. What about what do you think is the most beautiful thing in the world? Uh, especially, especially, and uh, exactly, it is uh, our brain. No matter, uh, no matter the human brain or the animal brain, or the neurons. It's kind of uh, you know communication. Uh, it's really beautiful. Just cell and cell have that kind of a specific, unique communication, and uh, with multiple kind kind of this communication, we form the network, and uh, within with multiple of this network, we finally got a brain, and uh, which just uh, uh, just uh, about one kilograms, or even you know mm -hmm. smaller than that. And we can just compete with the super computation, compute, com, super computers. Uh, even occupy the whole space in this brain, the super compute, super computers. And uh, uh, if we compete together to learn something new, uh, we, we we will definitely uh, win win this game because you know uh, the computer, the also the uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, they are just. They have already established a mature network uh, before ten years ago, and uh, there is nothing. Not not. No, there is no progress on the your neural network, but only the the uh, the ability of computer 
to do this kind of uh, computation, just mm -hmm. progress. So, so uh, the computer could uh, could uh, learn faster. But actually, uh, only a three-year-old child can have the uh, have already the ability to defeat the computer. Mm -hmm. So, uh, just how how our brain achieve this with, with such a little, you know little weight and uh, very small energy consumption yeah yeah it's really a uh, beautiful yeah. thing in the world yeah yeah i love that answer bohan thank you very much for coming on to our show thank you for teaching us uh, thank you uh, for interviewing me and uh, actually this is my first time to uh, face the video face the you know uh, being on the video and uh, actually my first time to have such a uh, about one hour you know conversation with a foreigner. <laughs> I haven't yeah. done this before. <laughs> this is great. These these uh, firsts that we have together, like one hour conversation with foreigner, yeah. is very important. That one's very important around the world for yeah. people to have. Go when you go to those countries, yeah. dive into long conversations with the people there, know how to ask good questions. That's very important. But also, take the risks in life. You know, get on to camera one time. Try writing a piece sometime. You do a little bit of science sometime. Try taking these risks incrementally in life. I like that a lot, Bohan. I'm very proud of you. You did great. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below on the episode. Let us know what you're thinking. Also, have more conversations with your friends, families, coworkers, people online about encoding, storage, and retrieval of memory, about the importance of studying this, about the importance of the analogies and how we see these things in our world. Have more conversations about it. Check out the links below to Bohan's work. Check that all of that out. Also, check out our links below to Simulation. You can support us, help us grow, help the artists, entrepreneurs, organizations around the world grow. You can find our Patreon, PayPal, CryptoCurrency links below. And also, go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. We love you very much. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you soon. Peace. Good job, Bohan. <laughs>